Okay. Um, I guess I can come across a bit, a bit um, stupid or a bit silly sometimes. But if I if I centre myself and and I and I put my head on, I I can be very logical. I can. originally you know made it possible for us to make this film um, so it's quite there's quite a lot of weight that comes with that Um, and we're here um, signing uh, with lots of fans. And as I'm going along in this musical journey, I'm, I'm, I get to a point where I'm trying to describe the eternal blackness. And like, <laughs> how do you describe nothing? <laughs> like, how do you describe nothing? Um, so, um, you know, there's, there's, there's that side to it too, yeah. Well, that's definitely a challenge that I'm looking forward to uh, to watching you create and <laughs> and make happen. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we'll see if it appears. <laughs> well, Jay. So, what's the what's the worst question you guys have gotten? Goodness. Um. I, di I didn't like there was there was one guy who was like if you could take credit for any oh, other actor's yeah. work yeah. who would it be and I was yeah. like but then you you'd still be you because yeah. how can you go yeah. that was me I said, actually I said Lassie <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it must be nice to actually like be here with a film that people are falling in love with it's kind of a yeah and it's been great just you know sharing the burden with my, <laughs> my good looking younger self <laughs> with your past yeah <laughs> had you met yeah. before this weekend oh yes we have yeah of course we had yeah yeah no <laughs> yeah. we hang out all the time yeah you don't remember but we did we did yeah <laughs> it, it was a wonderful evening yeah. <laughs> because mm. you, you know you have to pretend you're intelligent <laughs> <laughs> So you pretend it pretty well. How about you, Jamie? Are you uh, used I, to being chased down the street with a with a flash camera? No, I, I, do, I don't. I don't. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen to me. Um, I'm very fortunate in that respect, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I follow myself with a camera. It's, that's quite. That's quite embarrassing. We saw that on YouTube. It was yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here I am walking down the street. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's one of those things that I think you know with with this career and with what we do. Um, it happens occasionally, and I suppose you have to um, suck it up. Pardon? Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make it harder, or is it just part of the gig, you think? Uh, what, what, what do you mean? The the, the, the the press, the attention, the fame? Um, the well, no, I mean, this kind of press is cool. You so you guys are, are fantastic in this movie. How much of your success in the part that you play depends on how much you believe in this theory? Well, I don't think you have to believe in the theory as such, but you, you know, we both have to believe that the guy we play is the author of the complete works of Shakespeare. That's not difficult. Mm. I suppose if you're acting a role, if you're acting as, as, as this, as Edward de Vere, you should be Edward de Vere, not go, I took that halfway through a scene and be like, did I really do, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Mate. I, could yeah. never, I could never have written that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If you have time when you play at a festival or, or a normal concert, is there a difference in the drinks that you drink before your set 
and after your set. Jimmy's a massive fan of tequila, so it depends. It depends on sort of like what. It depends on where we are in the run of shows that we're doing. Occasionally, it's like if it's toward the end of the run, there'll be a lot more tequila being drunk. If it's at the beginning, if it's at the beginning, there's more likely red and white wine from these two. They've become quite the connoisseurs. I don't drink alcohol, you see, um, but I used to, and I was very good at it. But um, not so much anymore. <laughs> so yeah. So these are the real. These are the real drinkers. So is it sometimes hard to deal with the? Drunky, yeah? No, because you should have seen me. I, yeah. remember I remember what it was like. <laughs> I was the worst. Really? So. The worst or the best? It depends on how you look at it, really. Exactly, which perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> Being the worst. <laughs> okay. yeah, it's, just, it's just a battle, we just fight each other. Scott, I think we need to go film them on stage, huh? That will be good. <laughs> Hello everybody on Team Counterfeit, we're here at Greenfield, thank you so much for your support, we'll catch you out there. Hello, I'm Jamie. I'm Sam. And we are two members of Counterfeit, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I heard about you guys not that long ago when I jumped in and checked out the music, instantly got hooked. That debut album is incredible, and now you guys are here. For starters, what do you guys think it was about the band that, you know, got the attention of Republic Records? Oh God, the hair. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's what got me at first, too. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, Jason, myself and Roland met with Jill, our now A&R. Had a really, like, super good hang. Jill came to see the show, as did Devon, who works at Lava. Mm -hmm. They both loved the show. They sort of loved the energy, or so they said. And then we met with Jason here in L.A. at the Lava office and, like, just connected and really clicked. I think it's... I think there was just something real, you know, that was going on for all of us, you know, in that, in those sort of first few meetings that we just connected and it yeah. was like, all right, Jason was like, Jason called me, he sent me a text after we had a lunch together being like, I know you're a real rock star, I can see it when I look in your eyes. I'm like, Jason, stop massaging my ego, dude. But um, yeah, I don't know, we just, we just seem to just connect and click, you know, on a sort of like personal level and I, they, they said that they love the music you know yeah. it's it's a weird thing for us to be like oh, okay you know like <laughs> thanks i guess you know but like just as people i think we get along really well yeah now hey speaking of tattoos i got a tattoo for this show yeah! i promise everyone if, I, if we sold out the show i get a fucking tattoo who wants to see it yeah! all right go look at my penis promise wants to look at my penis I'm gonna get arrested for indecent exposure. There you go. I'm all the fucking girls. I should probably just play in my underpants now. Ah, oh, fuck that. I feel like coming to play with you guys, and if I come in in my underpants, Lord knows what fucking trouble I'm getting. Sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I love you both very much. Thanks for supporting me in every possible way. Very good, how are you? Very good. Now you've been pretty busy over Fashion Week, haven't you? I have. Well, I was at Hunter yesterday and my girlfriend is walking today. And so, yeah, I know. So it's, I've been rushing around, going to castings with her as well, being the loyal boyfriend that I am. That is so nice. Fine. Everybody needs one of you. Stop it. Behave. <laughs> right, so what are your three top essentials you need to survive London Fashion Week? Well, I only have two things on me, so it must be clothes, telephone and sunglasses. I wear sunglasses to pretty much every show, just in case my girlfriend's walking, because I do have a tendency to tear up when she's on the catwalk. Our heart is melting. No, it's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Bit of a pussy. That's very, very, very sweet. And lastly, who is your style crush at the moment? Mr. T. No, it's not, not Mr. T. You know Mr. T from the A Team? <laughs> I'm like, oh, the Abraham. <laughs> you're like, oh, who is that? Oh my Who's my style crush? I'm my style. My father is my style crush. Still, always has been and always will be. That's very, 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 very sweet. It's so nice to see you, as always, looking gorgeous. Thank you very much. I'm in top. 
massive payoff fight scene, basically. <laughs> and uh, so we were all there, like shooting uh, in like Hamilton, right? Yes. Hamilton, yeah. yeah. Hamilton. We love that place. Oh, oh God, yeah. I love, <laughs> love, that love place. Hamilton, but not the hotel. The hotel yeah. was like a really, a, a genuinely old, decrepit. Like no one had been there for years. It was moldy. It had asbestos. It had mice. I'm it sure. was like someone. It, some, someone took the Titanic off the sea floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. kind of cool to explore, though, right? Really it's cool. Not cool to be running around in shoes like this at three in the morning, fighting demons and fighting. And we know, were there for. Are there those for shoes are not good for fighting demons? No. Not well. I'm pretty good at it now, but they're not ideal. Jamie, thank you so much for speaking with Hong Kong Tatler. Thank you so today. much for having me. Before it's a joy. you go to film aid, now, are you ready for the Tatler quick fire? 30 questions. So ready, born ready. Can you describe your perfect afternoon? Uh, my perfect afternoon would be sitting in a field uh, having a picnic in the British countryside. And what's your favorite holiday spot? My favorite holiday spot? I, I'm a big fan of Verbier. What's your guilty pleasure? Miley Cyrus. <laughs> and, and what are you most excited about tonight at Film Aid? I'm most excited actually about telling people more about the charity. I went over to uh, the Thai-Burmese border um, and went and did some work in the camp over there. Um, and so it's going to be a real honor tonight to be able to tell everyone about that um, and really how the charity itself is helping people rather than you know, we can deal with a lot of facts and figures when it comes to charities, but realistically, we've got to talk about how it um, ground level affects the human beings. And what's one thing you can't live without? Um, one thing I, I can't, I cannot live without uh, music. I cannot live without my guitars. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Hey. I'm good. I like I'm your good. It's from Top Man, right? Thank you. Top yes, Shop. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yep. Good old Top Shop. Oh, so message. What do you want to owe? Someone just called me. Oh. Who is that? Who could it be? Maybe saying get get into Hall H. Yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. So, look, get, get, be focused. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So I haven't read Mortal Instruments, well, but I, I know. Sorry, I didn't have time before this to study before this up on interview. it. <laughs> no, I had like ten minutes. Quick, 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 quick. But I've been hearing all about it. It sounds kind of saucy. It's a, it's, it's a little saucy, it's a little sassy, it's a little sexy, it's a little this, a little that, yeah. yeah. Did that part of it intrigue you, as well the as the whole demon, are you demon trying, side? Are you trying to allude to the fact that you think I might be into, like, bondage? Is that what you're saying? That's what you're trying to allude to? A little bit. It's a loo that's a loaded question. A bit, you know. <laughs> maybe it's got a bit of Star Wars kind of action there with yeah. the brother and the sister, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, and there's a lot of leather, too, so yeah. that's so, good. Would you say that's the perfect film to bring to Comic-Con? I would say it's the perfect film to bring to Comic-Con. Look, we have like millions of fans of the books already, you know, it was a New York Times bestseller. It's like, it's done so well. Cassie's standing right next to me, the author, like every time I'm with her, like I've known Cassie now for ages, but I'm geeking out like whenever I'm around her, so, you know, I'm getting awesome. There's um, so many great young adult novels at the moment. Are you thinking like me, like I've got to write one of these? Yeah, no, but mine, mine wouldn't be. I like, I like write children's books when I write, or I write like a child. So I don't know if it would be. I don't know if it would be very accessible to the YA market. Like, mine would be like about a giraffe named Gerald that <laughs> fights demons. I think mine would just be Alicia the Awesome. Nice, like it. I don't know it. if anyone else would like it. No, but if you're into it, then that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, what made it cinematic was the fact that, like, you know, is the fact that we get to explore this world of craziness but also it's like so deeply rooted in reality and that's something that i think is really important like to be for people to be able to relate to them like to relate to these characters and it's not like we're not trying to recreate the vampire we're not trying to recreate the werewolf that's not what it's about like the story is more about the love and family and connection and and a girl going on a journey and a guy going on his own journey as well awesome. you sold it Thank you. Thanks so much. You've we'll done your job. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Because we, 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 we saw you sing on, on screen. Uh, you were 19, Sweeney yeah. Todd. Yes. What was Johnny Depp like? Amazing. He was incredible. Incredible man. I mean, you know, I actually started, I actually shot it when I was, when I was 18, I think. I just turned 18 and I was meant to, I was still living at school because I went to boarding school. So I was getting picked up from school at like five o'clock in the morning, being driven to set at Pinewood and then dropped back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everyone else is there like doing maths or whatever. And I'm going, yeah, just on a boat with Johnny Depp, no big deal, whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, it was the first day of shooting and we're standing on this big boat in the middle of Pinewood Studios and this huge fan 
blowing our hair. And it's the first time I've ever met him, and he's standing next to me. I'm just, this is mental. And he turns to me and he goes, hey, Jamie, that's your biggest fan. And I thought, <laughs> do you know what? That's pretty cool. You, yeah. <laughs> bit of a poor joke, but, yeah. uh, but very cool coming from him. And you pushed him in the water. Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Get out of my shop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's my close-up now, <laughs> But you've worked with some amazing actors. Um, uh, the Prisoner, for instance, you know, Sir Ian McKellen. And I, I know that he really took you under his wing, didn't he? He did, yeah. That was an amazing job for me. Like I said, you know, not n having gone straight from school into work, I wasn't offered the opportunity to really go out and, I suppose, discover myself, which, uh, which you know, sounds a bit weird, but a lot of people get to do as, as young adults. Um, and so I was thrown into the middle of South Africa and Namibia. Um, for, for months. For months, yeah. for about roughly six months. And I think for any, young, for any young actor or any young performer or any young boy, that's a very daunting experience. Um, and Ian was there and really did take us all under his wing because you can go slightly stir crazy on set yeah. and he was very much the one who would go right I think everyone's getting a little bit weird now come over for dinner <laughs> let's all hang out everything will be fine how brilliant <laughs> yeah he was amazing keeping it real yeah um, how daunted were you when sort of women all around the world fancied you when you, when you foolishly did Twilight <laughs> um, well it's, it's funny I mean with Twilight you were a good vampire by the way thank you very much thank you yeah. yes um, I with Twilight it was funny because I received a lot of attention from that movie, um, and I think unknowingly people paid me attention as sort of, sort of a heartthrob, but my character wasn't that at all. I was a very vicious, horrible vampire mm. um, who actually on screen didn't look that fit, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so it, it, it was, yeah, of course it was daunting, but that was everything that I've done, I think, is has really helped me progress, and, and not only career-wise, but personally as well. But, but also, it seems that you have fingers in so many pies, because I know that you're a model, and yeah. you also do the music, you're working on a new album, yeah. you've got your own clothing range coming out? Yeah, that drops at the end of the year. Um, I'm working on the record. We, we do eight shows a week, so we do Monday to Saturday, two shows on Wednesday, two shows on Saturday, and then go to the studio Sunday morning, and I'm back in London Monday evening for the show. Wow. You're single, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. It's definitely not. God knows how she deals with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, do you have like a diary? Do you just schedule Pen, in? Pencil her in every now and then when I can. <laughs> also, you're a man of two sides, uh, I should say. Um, uh, two sides to your personality, which we can see in your tattoos. Yes, on my tattoos, yes. I have, um, I have a cross and a skull, so I have, what's, I have a light side and a dark side. Um, is this your whole body then? Or is it I, just... try, I focus mainly on my whole body, yeah. I mean, um, I've got a skull on my leg as well. I've got a heart. Was that all on before my... the uh, yeah, vampire? Yeah, I do. Was that before the vampire? Yeah. Yes, they, they started before the vampire and then they sort of continued. Wow. Yeah, I've got a heart there. Above your heart. And on it, actually, it sort of goes there and then really? there's a little butterfly holding oh, it up. That's amazing. If, if you're ever in an accident and a surgeon has to operate... He knows exactly where to go. This, he's going to go, this is remarkably handy. <laughs> <laughs> All the best with everything that you've Thank got coming you. up, the musical, the film. It has arrived. The fans have reacted. How did you react to all the response you saw when Stranger Things Season 4 became the most ever watched premiere in Netflix history? It feels like I've been living in a different universe for the last week and a half. It's very strange. Um, I, I've said this a few times to different people, but we make something in a bubble. You know, we don't think about what people are going to think about it because we've, we've got to be so present. And so to hand it over is a very, like terrifying experience it's 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 weird and odd and nothing that's happening at the moment is normal you know you are wonderfully terrifying um the internet cannot get over your transformation into vecna what was the hair and makeup process like for you because i heard there wasn't actually much cgi right no it's about 10 percent cgi 90 percent practical effects yeah so barry gower who um you know made the night king and has worked on the witcher um, designed uh, with his team, Duncan Jarman, Pat Fode, all these great people in England, the Vecna suit, they took, you know, I did the body cast and all that kind of stuff. And then the prosthetics take about seven and a half hours to put on. Um, yeah, so we'd start at like three. Where were you at mentally during all <laughs> Not, not where I am today, let me tell you that much, in a very different space. That's a lot, how do you get through that? Meditation helps. I mean, it's also good because I was in character, you know, and and, and like diving deeper into it. I, I used to play like a lot of like really dark music and um, listen to weird stuff. So yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed we it. heard you were so incredible. You actually made Millie Bobby Brown cry on set. That could be true. Could be true. How did the other cast react to you on set? 
the, equally as terrified equally as terrified yeah um sadie it's funny like sadie in episode four spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it so turn off um or you'll edit this out um <laughs> Uh, Sadie in episode four and Vecna obviously have uh, have a bit of a heads off and 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 she wins in that moment. So there was always a level of strength that was coming from her. Whereas with some of the others, they were very helpless and 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 had to be scared. And I just kind of amped that up for them. Yeah. Do you, do you try to joke a little between takes? Like it's just me. Sometimes it depends. Um, it depends on what's going on. Really, it depends on if I feel like we've got what we needed and we're sort of just getting extra bits uh, and and then I don't, I, yeah it really depends I mean yeah I'll talk more about other parts of it later on when 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 the whole shows out yeah well the internet is loving the what's your Vecna song trend right now so what would your song be well I've answered this question already so I have to I have to say the same thing now which is annoying um, Placebo did a cover of Kate Bush's uh, Running Up That Hill, so it, it would be that. Or if I'm being naughty, it's Miley Cyrus uh, Party in the USA. Always be naughty. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and of course, I have to ask, what can you tease for volume two? What can the fans expect? Uh, you know, I can't give away much, but what I can say is that if you thought it had reached the limit of what was possible for this show, there's more to go. There's more to come. Yeah, it gets bigger and scarier and wilder yeah emotional for you guys to wrap it all down yeah i cried yeah i cried on the last day in front of everyone and i was i was in vecna and like i've been so like in it and then all of a sudden rap is called and i just like thanked everybody and just burst into tears yeah it was really odd it was odd a lot of i said you know it's not very cool to see a monster cry <laughs> i think we all we all felt this you know the vecna stuff is is such a lot of work you know from everyone involved and i think we all felt this collective sigh of like we we did it like we got it and that's really special it's special to share that with people Rostock, they will be the same. It's pretty much shit all over. <laughs> one, one thousand and two, one thousand and three. Oh, hey, County. I don't know if you uh, heard, I just did over a thousand. When I do vocal takes, I like to always, uh, well, stay ripped. <laughs>